Zimbabwe is putting their money where their money is. Let's explore. Some of you may remember I posted a video recently about Zimbabwe moving to a gold-backed digital currency. Well, they've made a bold move now, and they've set aside 140 kilos of gold to back up this new currency, and uh, it is going to probably increase more. In fact, there's a second auction, so to speak, uh, coming in days from now. I'm going to be referencing actually two articles about this, one from Bloomberg, it talks a little bit about what's going on with Zimbabwe and why the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, is none too happy. Zimbabwe used nearly 140 kilograms of gold reserves to back the first sale of its digital money. The central bank received 135 applications valued at 14 billion Zimbabwe dollars, or in other words, 12 million US dollars value, to purchase the gold-backed digital tokens. It said in an email statement on Friday that it plans at a second auction on May the 18th. The Southern African nation has turned to the digital money to help ease soaring demand for US dollars in its economy as the value of the local currency plunged. The move was criticized by the International Monetary Fund, which urged the government to rather liberalize its foreign exchange rate then risk depleting its reserves. Of course, you know, they were the ones that told them they should get rid of these gold coins that they had issued last year. And the IMF essentially said, screw you to that. In fact, that is now my most popular video. And now we're seeing more kind of pushback from the IMF on this move. But what is a gold, what are these gold reserves for? Yes, it protects the institution of the country, but if you don't have uh, a populace that has faith in their money, then what good is having your reserves if you don't have currency that's backed by something of value and of strength, strength and value. Gold has provided that time and time again. And the tokens are just one of the measures introduced to shore this currency up that's weakened uh, more than 40% against the U.S. dollar this year in a mid-shoring and soaring inflation. It's also released gold coins on Thursday warned that short-term interest rates may have to rise. The central bank's benchmark rate at 140% is the highest in the world. Zimbabwe is a nation that is ripe with, uh, with uh, corruption and had been in the past. Uh, I don't know what the current state is now. Obviously, a digital currency, as, as Penny has remarked in my last video, a digital currency managed by the government and it does not seem to be a good thing. Uh, but at the same time, having it backed by um, gold, it definitely is a good thing. And keep in mind that, uh, you know, Zimbabwe is not a, a, it's not a constitutional republic. I, I don't know what their system of government is there, but there's probably, they don't have the rights that we have here. And uh, more than likely, if there's any tracking mechanisms going on there, that probably don't need uh, you know, to do it through the people's money, although it is a it is one way that it can be done. But the very fact that they release gold coins in the physical form is certainly means that, hey, people are encouraged to hold gold. In fact, even China is encouraging people to hold gold, and they've just announced that they're allowing their citizens to buy gold uh, in a very easy way and to be able to get it physically. So that's the article from Bloomberg. There's another piece here from uh, Tech Cabal that talks about what's going on there in Zimbabwe. And the IMF has concerns. Uh, this is the headline here. After Zimbabwe backs new digital, digital money with 140 kilograms of gold. So what is 140 kilograms? Well, this is 100 grams of gold this bar is. So just imagine this tiny little bar uh, with 10 of these together is one kilo. And so you have a 140 of them, uh, that's a, you know, and then you uh, multiply that out, that gives you an idea. It's really not that much when you think about it in terms of how much space it takes up, 140 kilos of gold. 
and that's a, very, a small fraction of it there. So that kind of gives you an idea of, uh, of what we're dealing with and uh, to, for this to start out. And it just goes to show you that Zimbabwe is a poor country. So it's probably a pretty good start when you think about it. And it's using uh, uh, these bars in efforts to support their currency. This is despite the IMF's warning that the policy may lead to the depletion of its reserves. I guess if people were to actually uh, get the gold out or exchange it for gold, that could happen. But 140 kilos is not a whole lot. And not only that, but people probably want the, uh, the, the convenience of digital transactions. Um, and even in Zimbabwe, yes, indeed. Uh, so more likely people are not going to cash in their digital currency for gold. So I don't think it's going to be depleted anytime soon. It's using 140 kilos of gold from its reserves to solidify the foundation of its inaugural digital currency. Uh, the central bank revealed that they received 135 applications worth $14 billion or $12 million for the purchase of their gold-backed digital tokens. The country has also announced that there will be a second auction, as we mentioned before. In the midst of sky-high inflation, the Zimbabwe dollar is facing a tough time, reportedly losing over 40% of its value against the U.S. dollar just this year. As the local currency takes a nosedive, there's been a surge in demand for the American dollar, and they can't get enough of them. And, you know, that's de-dollarization, uh, you know, that's either by uh, voluntarily or by for or, or, or by not. In other words, it just can't get the dollars. So this is, this is where they're at in their situation. Uh, the dollar's finance minister, uh, Mithu McCube, stated that a significant portion of domestic transactions is now conducted in foreign currency, highlighting the preference for stability. And it's, it's a bid to facilitate local transactions. The government has even introduced gold coins alongside these digital dollars. And so they're going to keep the gold coins going. And that's a good thing for sure. It's an interesting approach, but the International Monetary Fund has expressed concerns about the potential depletion of the country's gold reserves. But you know what? You've got actual gold circulating in the country and you provide stability. And that means probably expanding the tax base. Well, some of that money can be used to replenish the gold reserves if they so desire. So, but nonetheless, the country is also exploring other measures to stabilize its economy. So it's not an all-in gold approach here, but still something to watch. It has kicked things off by scrapping the need for import licenses, allowing goods to flow into the country without any import duties or taxes. Good for them. They're really making some good moves here, I think. Also, the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe is considering cranking up the interest rates on short-term loans, even though their benchmark rate is a staggering 140%, earning them the title of the country with the highest in the world. Wow, highest interest rates in the world for sure. Yes, and that is something too. I don't know if that's necessarily a good idea, but hey, you know, you want to get money flowing, you want to get revenue and what have you, that might be one way to do it. But nonetheless... Uh, you know, when you look at uh, what the IMF is saying to Zimbabwe to not deplete their reserves, where was the IMF in Canada when they depleted all of their gold reserves? That's right. They have none left, save for maybe 77 ounces. That number just sticks with me. Uh, there was a report that I've seen back at the time. I think it's in 2016 when this had occurred. Um, and it was one sentence that says that they have hundred, they have 77 ounces left. I've not seen anything else on it other than that article that showed that. So if anybody knows, I would love to know about these 77 ounces left in Canada's gold reserves. But nonetheless, we here in the United States, we supposedly have, at least what most people, or what the official number is, over 8,100 tons. And it's been that way for years. We've not added any more or taken away. So who knows? how that's going to play out in the end uh, for the United States. But uh, we have the gold reserves, and they have, no, they have no intention on backing our currency with it, that's for sure, not anytime soon. But more and more states, though, are uh, considering having their own gold reserves and uh, recognizing gold and silver as legal tender. That's big. And for Zimbabwe to take this kind of action, I think is a good news, too. Good on the Zimbabweans for making this move. And uh, let me know what your thoughts are about this kind of news. 
you know, I enjoy uh, bringing this stuff to you. And if you enjoy uh, this kind of content, I hope you'll press that thumbs up button below. And remember, the folks, that no matter what these nations do, whether good or bad, one thing is for sure, that we know that gold and silver and has been money for thousands of years. And uh, they continue to be that, really, no matter what uh, governments or anything recognize them, because they are commodity money. And what is recognized as commodity money amongst the people, really. And that's the most important thing. Because what is it about transactions about what people have faith in? In fact, uh, money has been salt. It has been a stick with little notches carved out for about a couple hundred years, I believe. And uh, it has been seashells uh, and, and, and has been cotton fiber, has been paper. A lot of different ways that money can be. But gold and silver have certainly stood the test of time as a, a commodity money. And even the Bank of International Settlements recognize it as, as such since April of 2019, moving gold from a Tier 3 asset all the way up to a Tier 1 asset, putting on equal and on par with this, the fiat note we know as the dollar and other currencies out there. So there you have it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to all of you for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.